dude. Craft Brews and Casual Conversations. Joined with me, it's Derek. You know him from a lot of different things he's been on the show for uh, many reasons. Uh, this time he is here to talk a little bit about uh, a new podcast that he is. Well, it's a podcast that's been around for a while. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been around. I mean, we'll get into it, but it's been around well before I even was introduced to it. But uh, you're now on it. Uh, it it's... Uh, it's actually a fun a fun show uh, to listen to. I, I do enjoy it. It is called the is it Grit City Podcast. Yeah. So, yeah, the Grit City Podcast. That's kind of the unofficial nickname for Tacoma. Okay. Yeah, yeah I didn't I didn't know that, but now I do. Uh um Milwaukee has the same thing is they call it Cream City. And I don't know why. Uh but that's the thing. Cream City. We have cream puffs at the state fair. I don't know. Man. I I don't even know where to start with that. There's a lot, there's a lot of places you is, can go. Is there something is there something creamy about uh, Milwaukee we should know about? I mean, there's a lot of cheese. I, I don't know if that uh, you know. Uh, there's a lot of different things, but uh, let, let's get to the beer real quick. So I am uh, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to drink a beer. Um, I had a pretty horrible stomach flu over the weekend. Ooh. Um, I feel better. I feel fine. Um, but something has my mind, something happened in my mind in the process. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, but, uh, I'm drinking from Mason ale works wonky Kong. It's a, uh, um, a collaboration with eight bit brewing. They're both out of California. It is a sour IPA. So it is a, a collaboration brew. As I said, sour double IPA featuring prickly pear and peach combined with galaxy and mosaic hops. 9% ABV, zero IBUs. I've had this before, not on the podcast, but uh, it is good. Um, it, it's got like a juice look to it. Oh, it yeah. does have that, uh, it does have some tartness to it. And it has, um, but it, like you can taste that little bit of bitterness like you would out of an IPA. So it, it is a good blend. Normally, I don't think, I wouldn't think a sour and IPA really go together, but the, mm. they managed to do it. And it's, it's delicious. So- is it a artificial peach or is it like a natural peach? Because that's that's a deal breaker for me right there. Um, I guess I don't really get too much artificial peach out of it. Um, I would just say it's part of the. Um, it's probably part of, part of the hops that you get some of that scent or flavor to it. Because really, okay. it's just like it's like a tart, bitter IPA in my opinion. I'm not okay. really good at picking out like the the peach nodes or taste out of it um it kind of smells like more of a pear i would say um but oh, okay. i uh i don't know it's it's pretty good it's kind of like bitter juice which hmm. most people probably wouldn't like but i do i mean the branding is <laughs> entirely on par for me so i'm gonna have to give that one a shot yeah it's pretty it's pretty good stuff um and you got you got something yeah, so I went with uh, Black Raven Brewing. They're out of Woodenville, Washington. Uh, it is a light pilsner with lime. Uh, it is a 0.9% ABV, and it's meant to be a session beer. It's kind of their take on a uh, Bud Light Lime, but I'm assuming it's going to be better beer because I am a fan of their so. stuff. So i nice. give that one a try. Yeah, those are always good, too. Like a, It's like a real like kind of summer drinking beer. Oh, yeah, that's nice and easy. I wish it was uh, summer here, as I talked to a little bit before. Um, we're in the middle of a snowstorm. It's uh, I haven't shoveled yet. I'm not going to until it's done, and I'll probably regret that decision. But you know what? It is what it is. No work today. No work tomorrow. It's cool. Nice. Yeah, they, they shut her down. So um, I guess snow has good things for a little bit. But uh, do you get a lot of snow in Washington? uh it's it's seasonal like we we didn't get a whole lot of snow around december uh but like a probably about a month ago now we had a huge ice storm where mm, everything froze over fun yeah yeah that was that was an absolute blast um but usually yeah. we'll get we'll get like kind of every other year we'll get a good dusting okay. of like three inches ish but it's enough to shut everything down for us Except gotcha. for those of us that have to work. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, cool, man. Well, uh, um, it's been it's this is the first time in 2023, I think, since you've been on. Uh, uh yeah, I think it was November of last year. Was last it November? Time. Yeah, time, yeah. Time is weird. I don't understand it. Um, 2023 has been one of the worst years of my life, and uh, so hopefully it gets better. 
We can only hope, right? Uh, yeah. Fingers uh, crossed. Between between the endless sickness that's been going on in my house, I I don't think I had a normal. I didn't have a normal holiday. My daughter had influenza A Thanksgiving. I had influenza A over Christmas, um, Christmas and New Year's. So I did nothing, which is fine. Uh, my dad mm-hmm. died the first week of January, <laughs> and then. Um, we've had strep throat three times. We've had ear infections and then we just got this stomach bug. And now like, it's so weird because I, I feel better, but now like the sight of all like the food I would normally go to, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really grossed out by currently. And I think something's wrong with me, uh, where <laughs> I see like, you know, I would normally see this delicious cheeseburger and I'm like, yeah, I want to eat that. Now I was like, no, I don't want to eat that anymore. And I, I don't know what's what's wrong with me. I was going to say, I think it's probably a little bit of that residual sickness. <laughs> but at the same time, I would totally take advantage of that for the diet. Yeah. Like I could, oh, yeah. I absolutely. could stand to look at a cheeseburger like it's disgusting. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's good. And I even was like sending my wife these like vegetarian recipes. I'm not going to go vegetarian by any means. I'm going to still eat some chicken and stuff like that. But I was like, <laughs> oh, this looks good. This is all. We'll see how it goes. Maybe maybe my year is on a upswing, hopefully. There you go. But uh, um, enough about that. So you're on this podcast, Grit City Podcast. Uh, yeah. I, so I've been listening to it. It it really gives me in uh, and I'm gonna say this in a good way because I guess it could okay. it could be taken in a different couple couple different ways. But it reminds me of like a morning show radio, like a morning radio show in a sense. Um, that that tracks and there's there's a little story behind that so that totally makes sense and not in a bad way because some morning mm-hmm. shows that you listen to are just that cliche you know family guy weenie in the butt stuff um, but mm-hmm. this uh, no I like I like the way it goes you all mesh well uh, you, you can crack jokes I, I like that it's got that that good flow to it so uh, it's uh, I was I was really impressed by it I, I really liked it so How'd you, I guess, yeah, talk about how you um, got involved with it and just a little bit more about it. Yeah, so I, right after, like, I've lived in Tacoma now for, like, six years. I know you and I had kind of chatted about it on -hmm. on a past episode. Uh, But right after, I want to say a few months in, uh, I was looking for Tacoma-based podcasts, either just to collaborate with people or to find, you know, just what was going on in the city because I was brand new here. And I had stumbled across the Great City Podcast. They had a guest link, like, hey, if you want to be on the show, here's our email. And I just hit it up. And at that point, it was just uh, Scott and Brogan, the two original hosts. Um, It turns out that they had actually taken a break during the time that I had emailed them. So it was like three months after that, I got an email back saying, hey, you know, sometimes Geek Podcast, you're a local creator. That's what we try to focus on. So go ahead and come on. We have a couple guests or we have a new lineup here and uh, Justin and Brogan are both huge nerds. So this will work out. So I headed into literally the back of a pool hall in Tacoma to go and record this podcast. Like I walk up, I'm talking to the bartender. I'm like, Hey, I I'm here to do a podcast thing. She's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. You know where they're at. I'm like, no, this is the first time I've been here. I have no idea what's going on right now. Uh, but I made it back there. We sat down, we recorded, and we just hit it off, just connecting over nerd stuff and and just the, the jokes that we were cracking back and forth. And so fast forward now, uh, like basically five years later, uh, they had around 2020 started focusing on how could they continue the show without doing in-person interviews. And so I helped them set up their Discord. I turned them onto the chat bots that record so they could get backup recordings. And while they were doing that, they're like, well, hey, you're hanging out on a Friday night, a Saturday night. Why don't you just hop on and bullshit with us? And so I did. And I mean, we were still hanging out, going to parties together, uh, going to different events and whatnot. And so I basically just kind of was always around. And they're like, hey, you know what? You're not doing podcast stuff. You're looking to get back into it. Why don't you just join up with us? And that's where we're at. Nice, man. Yeah, it, it is a lot of fun to listen to. And I mean, obviously, you're familiar with the podcasting world. You mm-hmm. mentioned sometimes Geek. You had Rolling Misadventures. I would imagine this one has a little less uh, editing. And oh yeah, no, both, I don't. I just show up. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. You're like you're like the Rob of of this show. <laughs> I, I do a little bit more than Rob. I think like Maybe. I actually. 
I actually help them with their Discord stuff yeah. and behind the scenes. I also help book guests. He's so. he's uh he has he has started to book some guests, which is nice. Uh, and then he um he has mentioned Discord. I I'm not familiar with it. Uh, believe it or not, I've heard a lot about it. I probably should set something up with with Discord and figure it out. I just got on TikTok. Uh, oh, I am so bad with TikTok. I tried I to do a know. little bit of it while I was streaming, and I'm just like, I think I have I three videos it. posted, and I just gave up on it. Well, my little brother, he, he's um, he's 19, and he's like, he kind of wants to like get into like social media branding type of stuff. And I was like, oh, we'll just do it with my pod, you know, start seeing what you can do with my podcast a little bit. There you I go. was like, I'll, I'll, I was like, here's the email, here's the password that set this up, make me some clips or whatever, and throw it on my tiktok um he's done none of that and uh he <laughs> i have i have made every single video on there i've set up like the thing where i automatically get a tiktok after every episode that posts but it's just like an audiogram um which mm-hmm. is which is cool but um i've i've found that it's all the more views are from the like quote-unquote original videos that you make mm-hmm. um and i just like will think of random shit here and there and try to throw it all together i have no idea how to edit any of that stuff i barely know how to get the music on there it's um it's a weird thing um so uh but uh yeah do you what does as far as like grit city uh what do they do as far as um as far as like marketing and stuff like that like you, you, you... um as far as the social media goes it's a lot of word of mouth because mm-hmm. we are a tacoma based podcast we're focusing on the pacific northwest um Anything from comedians to uh, we had Mark Sargent, the flat earther on for an episode because he is from the area. Uh, So a lot of it's word of mouth when you're talking about, you know, a Tacoma based podcast. Okay, we're posting on subreddits for Tacoma because we're highlighting businesses and we want to spread the word that way. Then on the other hand, the people that are coming on the show, they're like, hey, if you want to know what my business about is about go ahead and listen to this episode. And I know just being a listener for years, I had checked out stuff that they were recommending too. So nice. it just all kind of goes hand in hand. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty sweet. I mean, you, you talk more about, I mean, the, the episodes like too, like where you, you talked about the Super Bowl a little bit, you talk mm-hmm. about other stuff and like personal stuff. So if you're not in the necessarily the Tacoma area, it's still worth the listen. You still have other areas of talk. Yeah, and that's something that had changed around 2020. They started doing the Saturday Night Grid episodes, or I guess we. I, I'm still getting used to yeah. being part of the show. Uh, but that's kind of our focus on those weekend hangouts. If we didn't have an interview scheduled, then we'll just hang out. We'll catch up ourselves, mm. talk about the things we've been checking out. Uh, Scott, he actually has his own channel on the Discord now where he posts just random links he finds nice. of different conspiracy theories or weird tech and science and nerd stuff. Um, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about video games because there's a gaming channel in there as well. And it's, it's just friends hanging out. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of podcasts like that and there are, there's a lot of good ones like that too. Like I'm one of the most popular uh, podcasts I listen to is just like that free form conversation between buddies and people love it. Um, you could argue that Joe Rogan is, pretty free form i mean he has yeah. guests on but it's not it's not really gravitating towards one thing usually i don't really listen to him anymore um but uh you know i i have never listened to him no i used to no i don't think i've listened to a single episode of joe rogan i used to when uh and i still will uh, but he went to like spotify only and I'd, i i actually mm. don't listen to a lot of podcasts on spotify um i use the, just the apple app but uh i don't know I just if there's a comedian I like that is on there, I'll listen to it a little bit. But then if they once they go talking about like hunting bears and shit like that, I was like, all right, I don't care about this. <laughs> and, then, and then I move on. Yeah. And that's that's kind of the beauty. Like people will come in and they'll listen to the Saturday Night Grits. Uh, but also, even though we're focusing on Pacific Northwest creators like we we're talking about the March 10th event that is going to be happening out here. That is a, uh, a nerd based chiptune style show. Hmm. where you could download their music anywhere so cool. there's something there for everybody yeah absolutely it's it's definitely worth uh the listen so uh i mentioned a little bit that there was the uh morning show aspect of it and you said there was some sort of connection what what is that yeah so justin he actually used to work for our local rock station ksw oh, nice. and 
that was one of the things that was really funny when we first like that first meeting that we had that first recording was that you know we're sitting chatting about like off mic what we do for work and whatnot i'm like you know i'm asking him well what do you do for work he's like oh i'm on the radio Mm -hmm. i'm like okay well which radio station he's like oh i'm on ksw i'm like oh shit that's how i know your voice yeah and so one of the things that like him and i kind of hit off like hanging out it's like i don't give a shit what you do who you are like if you're a local celebrity or not if you're cool then i'm cool we'll hang out Mm -hmm. and that was something that he was like all right cool yeah like i was over at his house recording i went to his birthday party which had like different musicians i had seen and nice stuff like that which made me feel very very out of place uh but it's just like that's kind of what he brought with the the newest version of the Great City Podcast when mm-hmm. they rebooted was he was used to doing interviews. He had interviewed for the radio station for their podcasts, and that's why it kind of has that feel to it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, I, I used to be also on a morning show. I used mm-hmm. to have the, I, I still am on the radio, but afternoons now, um, which is fine, and it's all pre recorded. Nobody knows that, so they do now uh <laughs> the day <laughs> day before uh that type of stuff but that's yeah I'm, I'm i'm very familiar with the radio format and kind of how the flow of it goes but i think that's what works well with it too and it's not like i said it's not like over the top corny shit like it's it's fun stuff that like buddies are going to talk about and, and yeah and, yeah and he definitely has that feeling during the interview episodes like he has that background of morning radio show and morning radio show interviews so some of that definitely shines through but even then like hanging out on the saturday night episodes Mm -hmm. it's got a little more of the afternoon vibe to it yeah it's it's a good show man and i um i'm happy to see you back in the the podcast game because i know you were in it for a long time you were putting a lot of work into it oh yeah and then you got a little bit burnt out so um but yeah what made you kind of get back into it you just missed it or because you did the Uh, twitch stuff too for a little bit yeah i did the twitch thing for a little bit it just it wasn't resonating for me like i enjoy playing video games i enjoy entertaining but then the video games started to turn into work sure which is what the sometimes geek podcast was doing to me Mm -hmm. um but they knew i was floating some different ideas of stuff that i wanted to do and they're like hey if you're just looking to hang out you're looking to record you know we could use you on the back end of things to bring some new ideas in, bring some new guests in as well as handling some of the tech knowledge that I have. Mm. And I'm like, you know what? It's the same conversations I'd be having with them if I was hanging out anyway. Yeah. So why not we, why not join in and record it? So I could still scratch that itch. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, there's just, there's something about, uh, something about doing this that, uh, you miss when it's, when it's gone too. like, you still want to get back into it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm happy that you're back into it. Um, I know, and I know that rolling misadventures was like the amount of work you put into that was, uh, yeah, that was, that was a good, like 12 hours a week I was spending <laughs> on that show. That's all. I mean, that's, it's, it's good to kind of understand how to do all that. And like, it's fun, like for a while, like I like making like intros to shows and throwing like, you know, I do, we do the, the Christmas stuff every year. We'd make like mm-hmm. the big edited for you know produced christmas thing but and that takes yeah a good chunk of time but i do that once a year i couldn't imagine doing that every week um and and putting out uh the stuff that you did so uh yeah you got the you definitely have the creative mind you definitely have the creative spirit uh so it's it's good to get you back out up there and uh you know promoting those uh, the local businesses and all the other indie pods going on like that because let's face it you know we're we're in the shadows of the Joe Rogans and and all oh, that yeah. shit, and we need to rise to the top. I think, well, I yeah, think we're you, better you than look him. At it. <laughs> we are. I mean, we just don't have the money to back it up. I know. But, I mean, you look at when we first started five, six years ago. Yeah. Indie podcasts were a new thing. Right. And so, like, that's something I'm, st- I'm talking to these guys. It's like, yeah, they've been around that long, but at the same time, they, they haven't quite come to that realization they're like you know we could be this big thing it's like yeah you would have if (laughs) if if it had hit that way you know five years ago now it's like if you don't have the money yeah you don't have the marketing it's just unfortunately not not to shit on the show that i'm on we do great work (laughs) and we get it we we have a decent going but at the time we're not gonna be a joke again 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, we uh, this show's got a, a, a actually a pretty good following um, now, and um, I'm surprised at some of the numbers that we hit because it's just like I we literally started from nothing. Uh, just mm-hmm. it was an idea. We made it. Um, m- most of my friends and family don't listen to it. <laughs> uh, most of Same. Rob's friends and family don't listen to it. So the fact that we get uh, the numbers that we do is, I think, that's more kudos to us for putting in the work and um you know doing whatever i guess whatever we have to do word of mouth uh cross you know promotions of of, of sorts and yeah it's it's pretty cool and it's just fun to do five years man i this, this show has been exist has existed for over five years which is longer than uh, i've held most jobs yeah i was gonna say longer than pretty much any podcast i've listened to like i was looking at my list the other day and I'm down to like maybe three that I had originally listened to that are still around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I had to I had to call a good like twenty of them from my list because they just don't exist anymore. And there's so many like people I've interviewed that don't do their shows anymore, and I'm just like, oh, that's, that's unfortunate. And life gets busy. That's 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 part of it. Um, Absolutely. Um, but uh, you know, finding finding an hour or two a week to to hang out with buddies and be social and to to talk is is important and. Uh, a good way to uh, uh, live a little bit. I mean, otherwise, what else would I be doing? I don't know. Eating Fritos. Playing God of War. I would be playing God of War. I'm so <laughs> I'm so behind on all the video game stuff, and um, we have you know we have one snow day. And I'm like I'm gonna play God of War because one day I'm gonna get a PS5 eventually, and I want to play the new one. So I I I just looked back to like my saved files. I was like I haven't played this game since 2018. So I oh, wow. I, yeah. So, so I was like, I don't know what's going on. So I restarted it, um, playing it, and my PS4, the fan is so loud on that thing. It sounds like it's going to blow up. Um, yep. So I'm just waiting for that to happen. Uh, and then one day I'll get a PlayStation 5, and uh, I'll be able to to do that, I guess. Um, I miss I miss video games. And I've, I've thought about the Twitch stuff. I, I, I want to do, like, a Twitch aspect of the show, but it just seems like so much fucking work. Uh, like, I don't know if I could just... I could probably just hook up a camera to the thing and just broadcast mm-hmm. and you, there's settings. I like, uh, I know I, I've interviewed a couple of people who are on Twitch, including you. And I don't know necessarily your setup that you had for it, but you know, there's some people that it's like, it's all through like a PC. And so they, they got like their PC screen. They got their, their mm-hmm. game screen. They got their chat screen. They got like, it surrounds them. And it just seems like a, a ton of work. It, it, it seems, I mean, it's cool. And it's awesome, like when people do it. I was just like, but I don't know, I don't know how they do it. Yeah, for for mine, I I would basically copy the same screen that I was recording on. So like, I would have I have my second monitor, the one that the camera's up over mm-hmm. here. Um, I would run Streamlabs on that. It would copy the screen that I'm currently looking at right now, mm. and the chat's already integrated with them. So it's on the side, so you know, it's just a matter of learning to do that keep knowing what you're doing right and focusing and making commentary or recording a podcast paying attention to what your guest is saying as well as taking that quick glance over to look at the chat and bring it up as it's necessary yeah yeah it's that's that's a lot like and you don't really like oh it is i don't think people like realize like you have to be pretty aware you know you're not just focused on the video game you're focused on mm-hmm. uh talking to uh whoever is participating in the chat having some sort of dialogue with uh, whoever and whatever and and trying to keep the content uh entertaining i don't i don't think people understand like the the amount of effort that goes into it same thing with like a podcast or a youtube channel i don't uh, there really needs to be like a, a focus and there has to be uh, people who are dedicating time, effort, money into into this craft, and um, you know, a lot of people get kind of like shit on for for being like, if they go, yeah, I'm a YouTuber, and people are kind of well, like, you know, kind of bat their eyes at them. But it's just like, dude, like if they have like consistency on their channel, like they're they're putting the work in, so you should like applaud them for that at least, or at least like commend them. You don't have to like it, but you can at least acknowledge that it's one a possibility. You you could blow up. You could blow up and oh become, yeah, become the next Logan Paul, God forbid. Uh, but uh, um, <laughs> in you know you could be really successful with it. It is a possibility. Um, so, but at the same time, like 
It's just, it's just people don't realize it. And that's where I get a little bit frustrating, I guess. You know, I still don't I don't consider myself a podcaster by any means. Yeah. Um, I just uh, I have a podcast. That's what it always is. Always, I have a podcast. Um, stuff like this. I don't say I'm Drew. I'm a podcaster. Um, <laughs> and, and people, too, like they'll just be like, oh, yeah, he has one. Or and that's it's just uh, it's a weird thing. But uh, I, you know. I put work into it. I've cre- I created the t-shirt designs. I, I did all that stuff. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's a fun thing. And I think people need to recognize. Damn it. Yeah. That was something I struggled with a lot as well. Like I have a podcast. Um, I had a Twitch channel. I had a YouTube channel. Uh, I think the biggest part for me was that it wasn't my main gig. Yeah. So it was like, oh, if I'm talking about, oh, I have this psychic. Well, what do you do? Oh, I'm a podcaster. That was kind of how I started to transition. Sure. There. Yeah. And um, I mean, I have, unfortunately, I have many side jobs as it is on top of my full time job. I do the radio and then I also DJ weddings. I theoretically have my own DJ business, but it's just, it's just all again, word of mouth. I have all the stuff. Yeah. Um, people will be like, hey, can you DJ this? And get the details and i give them a price and they either say yes or no and if they say yes they pay me and then i do it um so it's uh you know hustling hustling podcasting is the only side gig that i w- don't get paid for <laughs> yeah yeah i i barely broke even towards the end of rolling misadventures so i totally get it yeah like I, nowadays they're like uh you know they've, they've got a decent patreon they've got sponsors and it's like they're like, okay, well, you know, we'll figure out payments and whatnot. I'm like, dude, I hang out and bullshit with you guys for free. I don't need to be paid for it. Yeah. You know, throw me a t-shirt, throw me a hoodie. We'll call it good. For sure. Yeah, that's one thing, too, that, like, um, and I think that I wish there was more, like, information about this for, so if people are listening or have a podcast or have something, like, I wish there was more information on how to actually, like, get sponsors or how to get um, ads because, um, again, Like we're competing with people who are already commercially successful. Mm -hmm. So Rob Lowe created this podcast that he didn't need to make. And it's fine. It's a good one. He talks to a lot of people that are on every other podcast with other celebrity hosts and they're getting paid, you know, right away. Oh, State Farm's sponsoring them. Um, All these people are sponsoring them. And it's just like, I don't know. I just wish there was more like knowledge and more like um, eagerness of, uh, of willing or willingness to share this is what i did to get this person this is what i did to get this person because mm-hmm. now a lot of times even with like interviews um i just reach out to people on instagram or or facebook or something like that like um and and a lot of times they'll say no some of them say yes and they they hop on and it's people in bands that i really like or something like that and a lot of times um this has happened a couple times it's disappointing where they say yes and then it just doesn't happen um, because there's, you know, I'll email them again. There's just no follow up, and it, it is what it is. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I, that's what, like, I wish like more like people like you, me, and you know some of these people that have found success in certain avenues can like collaborate or even just discuss like how do we how do we make this more than just a hobby? Like how do we actually make this into a little bit get a little bit of money and actually, you know, we're working class people. Um, yeah. and I think a lot of times what we have to say might be a little more important than what, um, you know, what fucking Joe Rogan has to say or who, or Jordan Peterson, fuck that guy. Um, like <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just my opinion on it, but I, I don't think a lot of people share that opinion. Yeah, no, I, as, as to answer the previous question, as far as how, Grit City Podcast got their sponsorships. It's been uh, Die Cut Stickers. They interviewed the guy who runs Die Cut Stickers oh, because cool. he is a local. Nice. Um, you know, the the different bars, it's Friends Bars okay. that are sponsoring. Um, I know in my case, um, I did a, for Rolling Misadventures, I had a headphone sponsor for one oh, nice. month, I think. And it was literally a friend of mine threw me a bone. They're like, hey, they're looking for podcasts. I didn't get paid for it. I got a free pair of headphones. So I'll take free I mean, shit. <laughs> exactly. 100%. Uh, or for like a, uh, I had a sponsorship for a company that makes dice, like 
oh, sure. tabletop game dice. Yeah. And it literally was, I sent them an email and said, hey, if you guys have promo codes or anything like that, throw it my way. I'd be happy to throw it on just to get something out there. Mm-hmm. And they literally said, okay, here's the promo code. And based on the sales, you'll get a kickback. Yeah. And so it's just reach it out. Like there's a good four or five, six companies that I had reached out that, that I heard nothing from. But it just happened to be this one. They're like, hey, we checked out your podcast. We like what you're doing in the scene. Nice. You have a little bit of a following. You know, if this if your show is huge and you get a whole bunch of kickback, you'll get a percentage. If not, then you're not out of anything. Right. Use your own discount code and buy yeah, dice for, sure. for cheap. I did. I mean, I, I, I've i had really one, like, one or two um, where we did a couple of ads for some places. And uh, we did get uh, – the one thing I, I, I found out was, like, the promo code that we had was the most used of all the other podcasts that they had. Right. And uh, I mean, we did get some money for that a little bit, but then they, they just like bailed. And I was like, dude, like, come on. <laughs> like we're, you know, <laughs> it was going so well, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, this is how it goes. Uh, um, but you know, maybe one day we keep, keep grinding and, and keep trying it out. Uh, uh, how's so outside of podcasting and everything like that, how's, How's the year treating you? How's life going? Uh, you know, year hasn't been great. I yeah. had the eye thing going on for like two months. It's still not entirely okay. Oh, there's yet, something wrong so. with your eye. Yeah, basically, um, it was like a bad case of pink, but they don't know what caused it. Mm. And like, I'm still regaining the eye, so oh, that's really? been fun. Dang. Uh, we did actually lose a family member uh, about a month ago now. Uh, she lost her fight with cancer. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Fucking sucks. Yep. Uh, but she, it, she knew it was her time. Like she was like, you know what? I'm not fighting this. So yeah. All said and done. Like it sucks. You, you just gotta have to take it. I never, I've never experienced like uh death of a family member until, until this year. And unfortunately it was my dad and it was, um, this is kind of the same thing. He had a, a terminal illness for 11 years. Uh, I really, we really knew it was coming uh mm-hmm. it just but like when it happened i was just like fuck you know and then yeah you just uh there's there's uh i'm still dealing with some of it like as far as like uh um i saw him like when he, he had passed away in his bed i saw him um and it was just that kind of fucks with me a little bit because it's just like uh is it i don't know I've, I've seen i've seen people who have passed away before at funerals right like when they have the open mm-hmm. casket or whatever but i've never seen it in like in their home and then you have to sit there and yeah, wait that, to, that would fuck with me you have to wait for people to come get them and it's like what do you do in that time and it took like two hours so it's like what am i supposed to do right now and it's just uh yeah it's still it still kind of it fucks with me a little bit and then still like reaching for the phone to go text my dad because i i saw something funny or i want to get like the latest gossip on, on a family member or something like that <laughs> and uh um just knowing like i can't do that it's just uh it's been weird it's it's mm-hmm. it's really weird and then makes you think about uh, i've really i've done like so much reflecting on my own life and how i've approached it and that could be why i'd, I'd also don't like the side of cheeseburgers currently too is a <laughs> I've eaten so many of them. Um, <laughs> I just need to uh, try to stop. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, man, it's it's strange. So I, I am sorry that 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 happened. And it's, uh, uh, you know, it's only fucking February. So hopefully, hopefully right. it gets better and hopefully things start to look up. But um, yeah, that's one thing they don't teach you in school, man, is how to how to deal with grief. I think that should be a whole semester class or something because it is, it, it's such a strange thing, and I've I've never dealt with it. I don't know if I dealt with it in the, the healthiest of ways. I didn't like go binge drinking or anything. I got sick right afterwards. Like I I again I had like this like crazy cough and fever like the next day. So I was like, I'm feeling like shit. I got people blowing up my phone to, like about all this, and then I'm just like everyone just leave me the fuck alone. I'm trying yeah. to like, you know, and then, um, I just, I just ignored so many people and I don't, I wouldn't say that's a dick move by any means. I'm just, I just processed the way I needed to process. And a lot of that was just like, Hey, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to anybody right now. I just need to deal with this and be alone in my, in my thoughts, I guess. And, and just think about life. But it's, uh, yeah, I still, I still get caught. Like anytime there's like, 
a downbeat. It's it's so weird how it just my mind goes back to that. It's uh it's strange. I don't know if you deal with that at all, but it's uh it's strange. <laughs> and I Yeah I don't yeah, like it. No, I like I wasn't it was my aunt who passed it. Okay. I was super close to her yeah. when I was a kid. Okay. Uh, but as I've grown up, I've kind of just grown apart from a lot of my extended family. That happens. Um, and at the same time, it's like, she didn't want it to be a whole big thing. She didn't want a funeral. None yeah. Of that. My dad and, didn't either. And, and having the extended family be like, well, we won't have a, we won't have a funeral. We'll have a barbecue. We'll have everybody over. I'm like, that, yeah. that's not like, I get that's how you're dealing, but that's not what she wanted. So I got to respect yeah, like, you know, a year from now, six months from now, if you're like, hey, come down in the summer, let's have a barbecue. Cool. Mm-hmm. I'm totally fine with that. But I dealt with it kind of in the same way. It's like, you know, took a step back. Like, you know, I was texting my mom and my brother about it and they they were taking it harder than I was. So it's just like kind of being there for them helped mm-hmm. me cope a little bit. It's like, OK, I'm not alone in this. But at the same time, it's like, hey, I I could talk about this for like a half hour. I'm done. Like, yeah. I got nothing for you. I'm no help. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, unfortunately, me and my sister got thrown into the middle of like some family drama, too. And it was just like, my God, like this is just the most ridiculous shit ever. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very different because of it, I think. Um, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully still still as funny as I once was. Maybe. I mean, I'm still listening. I'm still enjoying it. So. <laughs> Good good uh, Something's there. sorry to talk about all this depressing shit <laughs> but that's just you know <laughs> that's just what's going it's you on. and i catch it up it's the friend's <laughs> bullshit and it's what it is yeah absolutely man um but yeah have you um have you gotten into any uh new tabletop games or any any fun stuff like that uh been playing a lot more board games with the wife so we're still kicking around on that playing a whole bunch of that um video game wise uh i mean i've never stopped playing video games yeah. so like I'm playing the new Dead Space remake. Oh yeah, I've I've heard good things about amazing. that. Amazing. I've never yeah, played it, Dead Space. I I tried to play it on PC like forever, probably ten years ago now. Mm. Uh, but it's just something about it now. It's just hitting all those vibes and nice. with the uh, the new resolutions, the new frame rate, like yeah. all the up-res stuff. It's got that alien feel to it, and it's it's Pretty just sweet. hidden for me. Yeah, I mean, um, it's been a hot second since I've even put on turned my playstation on um i think really the last game i was playing was when they remade tony hawk uh when they remastered tony hawk one one two is a lot of fun and that brought back like crazy memories and that's a game too like my my kids will pick up and just kind of play here and there and it's it's fun to fun to watch them kind of go through the same experience that i did when i was when i was their age and then uh it's it's not the same soundtrack but it's close enough it's it's close enough yeah where it's like yeah like i hope you catch on to all this music and even though like i listen to the same a lot of the same bands that are on there all the time in my car and my kids complain about it but you know it's different when they're <laughs> it's different when they're a skater it's like oh yeah this is right this is when i should I be mean, listening to less than jake <laughs> that's why we got into it right yeah absolutely uh um but yeah i i really want to get back in, into gaming um as, as much i, I kind of want to play that new fucking harry potter game um it looks pretty sweet uh i've heard i mean i've heard a lot of people say you shouldn't do this because of various reasons but it looks fun <laughs> like it did i i was never into harry potter so i got no really no on it either way really yeah that's surprising. like i it hit when god when did the first harry potter come out i was oh, probably in junior high. uh yeah i was i think when the first movie came out i want to say i was in like fifth grade fifth sixth grade okay yeah, and, I, and I'm a few years older than you, yeah. so yeah, that that tracks. Yeah, and like I was into around probably seventh eighth grade. I was watching more of the weird culty classic movies sure. and getting into horror stuff. So yeah. just ran in different circles with For that. Sure. Yeah, it looks fun. Um, but yeah, but definitely want to want to play the new God of War. I still haven't played the second Spider Man game, the Miles Morales. I've heard nothing but good things, yeah. and I still haven't pulled the trigger. I'm just waiting until it hits that sweet price point for me. It's only like on the on the PS5 I saw today at like Target. If you buy it online, it's twenty bucks. Um, oh, fuck. Yeah, so I don't know. See, if I can't tell. X- I can't Xbox. tell my wife, hey, I'm going to go drop six hundred dollars on a new console <laughs> so, so I can buy a twenty dollar game. Wasn't it on X? It should be on Xbox too. If you, I don't know if you. No, that. no, it was a uh, PlayStation and PC. I think. Oh, really? And PC sales just haven't been there for the PlayStation games. Yeah, um, but yeah, it looks it looks a lot of fun, and um, yeah, it's so like 
you know my my daughter's 14 she can watch she can watch me play whatever game um my my middle is is nine he can he can start to watch like i'm letting him watch him i'm letting him watch me play god of war because it's really not it's not really that bad uh, you're you're yeah. you're killing monsters um for the most part occasionally a person whatever um and then uh you know the baby he can watch whatever the fuck you, you on tv he doesn't know what's going on um as long as it makes noise and has colorful pictures on it like he's <laughs> he's into it <laughs> or or he's taking like his my, my, my niece my brother's first kid like he's been he plays a bunch of Fortnite. like he's the reason oh, i sure. got into playing Fortnite, and she loves just doing she's about a year old now and she loves music nice. so anytime he's doing the dances it's my music she is 100 percent about it. he's like all right cool i can play Fortnite, and she can be <laughs> awake it's fine i'm like yeah you realize for like a couple of years until you have to really start thinking about oh yeah i'm shooting a bunch of people maybe she right. shouldn't watch this right and it's so weird because like, like like i said it's been since 2018 since i've played that god of war game and i remember my son who is now nine um so that was like fucking forever ago he was four or five years old Mm -hmm. um i remember him like imitating the little kid uh atreus and i was just like ah i probably should turn this off (laughs) now now like like, (laughs) i can't have you like yelling some like god word and punching a kid you know or like pretending to shoot him with arrows um so yeah you're absolutely right there is there's a sweet spot with the kids that you can do that with but then once like they get a little awareness and then they like look at a screen and start to freak out. And you're like, all right, well, this is done. I remember, um, I remember I, pl- I was playing, um, the, uh, the South Park game fractured, but whole or whatever. Oh, uh, the second geez. one, which is a lot of fun. And this is when I was, yeah, oh, yeah, it's a blast. This is when I was on like third shift. So I'm playing it. You know, I woke up on a weekend at an obscure time. Can't get back to sleep. I was like, oh, I'll go play this. So I'm playing it. And of course you get, you just get lost. You just get lost in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, it's pushing like six in the morning. My, my, uh, my daughter comes is, I'm pretty sure it was my daughter, uh, comes out. And then at that time, it was like towards the end of the game where there's all these people are dead in the street. And of course, Santa Claus is one of them. And, uh, <laughs> She just know. looks at the screen. It's like Santa, and I was like, "Oh God, I gotta get this off! <laughs> I gotta get this off!" <laughs> it was, uh, it was a uh, uh, fun times, but yeah, uh, I still have to be a little, um, I still got to be a little aware of what I'm playing. And by the time it's like, oh, I can start playing Resident Evil when uh, my kids are sleeping. But then by the time they're sleeping, I'm like, "Fuck, I'm an old, old man. I I'm sleeping yep. now too." <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's just just how you're talking. It goes. You're talking to the guy who took a nap before Hoppy on the podcast. Hell yeah, so dude! I totally get it. Naps are naps are the best. I took uh, I did not take any naps today, but I definitely could have. Maybe I'll take one tomorrow since it's another another closed down day because the the world outside is crumbling. Um, winter blows, especially in Wisconsin. <laughs> it sucks. I'm not, I haven't shoveled yet, so I'm very. I'm gonna pay for it. I, I definitely am gonna pay that's, for that's it. That's when you take the nap right after that. God, it's gonna be awful. It's probably gonna take me a couple of hours just because it's I mean, we're with the with the wind and everything like that, we're definitely over like a foot on my driveway. Oh jeez. So, yeah, it is it happens sometimes. And then um Yeah, you just shovel it because my I have a snowblower, it doesn't work. So it just sits <laughs> in my garage and then I, I shovel and uh throw some headphones on and just get to it. I mean, it takes me enough motivation to try to spend the 30 minutes to mow my lawn, spending two <laughs> hours shoveling snow. Fuck that. I'd oh, move. It's horrible. It's horrible. Um, and the worst part about winter is like, cause I have two dogs is he like, you know, like all the dog shit. Yeah. There isn't, there's technically none. You can't see it. But when, <laughs> when it melts, Oh, I'm in a world of hurt. It's going to be, that's going to be a two hour adventure too is. Yeah. Is, oh, here's all the winter poop that I got to get. And, yeah yeah i guess there's some perks to being in uh uh in washington because it's isn't it doesn't it rain there a lot though yeah yeah i was that's something that uh like i've had friends come up to visit they're like it's just great all the time i'm like yeah for for like three months yeah like other than that like we have we have seasons so it it balances out but yeah it definitely takes a toll like i want to say probably about two weeks ago now we had like a bright sunny day nice and I was like, I have not seen blue sky in over a month. So yeah, 
We, I mean, we get the blue skies, but the the thing in Wisconsin is, and it happens every every year. We'll get like these amazing days in like February where it's like mm-hmm. 45, 50 degrees out. It's beautiful, and you're just like, God damn, spring's around the corner. And we call that fake spring, the first fake spring, because then the next day there's a blizzard, <laughs> and then um, you know you encounter that. About a week later, you get the same thing again. You get that little ring of hope. All right, so we got. Th- two three days of, of really nice weather it feels good uh we, we love it and then bam next day another snowstorm it just uh there's a lot of fake springs and then there's like third or fourth winter and then finally spring happens and then the um the dead of summer comes where it's just like humidity central mm-hmm. uh it's uh the worst it's i don't know why i so, live here so it's it's kind of the same here just replace snow with rain okay I, it's, I think it's I would prefer similar. rain, to be honest. That's, again, why I'm not going to move to Wisconsin. <laughs> Wisconsin's great as far as, like, they got good beer. We got good cheese. Um, the Packers used to be good. Uh, the Bucks are still good. And that's it. <laughs> so. I was going to say, well, you know, the cheese and the beer, with the exception of the super local stuff, you could get that anywhere. Right. You could That's watch true. the Packers and Bucks anywhere. That's true. That's true. We're uh, my my wife and I are considering moving in like the next like five ish years and and leaving the the state. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, but if we were to go, we'd just probably just go to Minnesota, which is essentially the same thing as Wisconsin. I was going to say the same place, yeah, <laughs> just more lakes. Uh, that's uh, that's about it. But uh, uh, no, we have some family over there and stuff too that we would like to be a little closer to so we'll see man but uh um i appreciate you coming on uh let's talk about how people can follow grit city how can they follow you and 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 get up to date on on everything that you got going on yeah uh if you want to check out the show wherever you're listening to this podcast just search for the grit city podcast or find us on google like literally you type in tacoma podcast it's one of the first things that pops up or you can visit grit city podcast.com uh if you want to follow me on twitter you can follow me at sometimes geek i'm back on that account again nice because it's just too good of a name i can't get it's rid a good of one. it um but also if you are interested in the podcast you're enjoying what you're listening to uh there are links for the discord in the show notes for that as well we do live episodes live recordings so you can come hang out in the chat bs with us ask our guests questions things like that Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on, and you know you're always welcome on. It's uh, it's always great talking to you. Yeah, likewise, man. I'm glad we got uh, we got to catch up again. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. <laughs>